and welcome to using Apache MXNet in production deep learning streaming pipelines. I'm Tim Spann. I'm a principal data flow field engineer. I also do uh, some blogging. I run a meetup. You'll find a lot of my articles and code linked below. And please join uh, my meetup. We do a lot of different topics. If you're interested in speaking, just contact me. We could do that. Now, there's a couple different ways that we do these uh, machine learning pipelines with AI. Uh, one of those is with a native processor that I wrote for Apache NIFI using uh, the standard Apache MXNet Java interface. This one really is an example for you to uh, take with and use in your own flows by enhancing it, put your own model in there. This is using the standard single shot detection pre-trained model from the object zoo. Very easy to use, but it's a good example and uh, works on the data that we have coming in. So check it out. Next, another way I put these workloads into production is using the deep Java library. This is a great library that lets us use uh, MXNet, lets us use PyTorch, TensorFlow, Onyx, bunch of different uh, libraries, mix and match as you need to. I like to stick within the Apache framework. So using uh, Apache MXNet with this is great. There's a lot of documentation, which is really good. I can use a ton of MXNet models and the rich model zoo. It is very fast Java. And there's a bunch of pre-built uh, things that make this easy. And I can easily do action recognition, image classification, instant segmentation, object detection. Uh, I'll show you Q&A and sentiment. Very easy to do. There's a lot of information on this. Highly recommend it. So I took one of those and I made an MXNet native processor using that DJL. This one is just doing a very simple uh, detection here, but it's uh, another good use case. And this is documented. What's nice is when I put a mop, an image through this, which it will be done in a streaming manner through my NiFi cluster, which can be running in any of the public clouds or private cloud or on your laptop or in an in-premise uh, cluster, whether that's Cloudera uh, data platform or something else, doesn't matter. Have, uh, the output of this is a bunch of attributes, so I don't change that image. They still have that image. I just put out a new image that has the results of that with a bounding box. And I give you the coordinates of that bounding box with the uh, height, width, X, Y's, all those sort of things, plus the class output from what it thinks it is and the name of the new file. Now, if you want to enhance it, all the source code is right there. You can pick a different model. This is a good way to get uh, used to using this. You could output different parameters if you want, more classes. You get the idea. Simple Java application, very for you, easy for you to extend. And this works right in uh, Apache NiFi. Another one I wrote using uh, DJL again is for sentiment analysis. Again, what's nice with DJL is I could switch back and forth between PyTorch models and MXNet models, depending on, you know, if I want to test things, see the performance, if a model changes one place or another. And then we'll output attributes again so not changing your main uh, text or whatever you have coming in so it gives you the specifics for probability of negative uh, the percentage same with positive plus the raw classification i'm getting back so it lets you uh you know make those decisions on uh, what you want to do there and that's fully documented open source extend that maybe put in a different model if you need to did the same thing with bert q a so you could use Distillbert to do uh, question and answers. Uh, this is built on a pre-trained model. Uh, there's the PyTorch version and the MXNet one. You can move back and forth, whichever one uh, makes more sense to you. This I put in, uh, let you put in a question and let you put in uh, what you want to run that against. And those are attributes you can pull out of uh, live text. I'm pulling that in from a REST news feed but you could do that from, I put in a REST endpoint as well. However you want to get data in here, 
one uh, question on it, get your results, very easy to do. Again, the open source component, you can extend, change the model, change what the inputs or outputs are, enhance it, you know, tweak it however you need to. Uh, if you find something really interesting you like, put it out there in GitHub, make a fork or give me a pull request. I'd love to add that to uh, what we have there now. And this is documented with a couple of articles. Next up, I keep talking about Apache NiFi. Again, Apache NiFi and MXNet. Uh, these projects work really well together. Uh, why I like Apache NiFi is it's a sort of a universal router and gateway to do whatever I need to do, whether that's, you know, interact with machine learning and deep learning, access data, transform data, load data in a streaming manner into different data stores, whether it's in the cloud, on-premise, hybrid cloud, wherever that is, whether it's in a, say, a cloud era data platform or a native AWS, whatever your things you need to interact with, REST, databases, files, logs, sensor data, device data, images. So I get these images coming back from webcams. You can see the throughput. I can push through a single uh, small NiFi server. I get a lot of them and I could push through a ton of data and do a lot of analytics on it and transformation while it's midstream. And I want to show you a quick demo. I know we don't have a lot of time for this session, but I want to show you this hands on. So at the edge, I have a couple of NVIDIA devices. It's your great choice for doing that. I've got uh, an Xavier and a couple Jetson Nanos. Also have some sensors to get some device data energy data plus at the edge because i have these powerful gpus i'm running some classifications uh, my xavier has four cameras on it i'm doing a segnet and i'm doing a, a bunch of others on those four cameras getting the results of that data plus all those images and i'm having them go through a minify agent which runs on those devices does some validation cleanup and sends it securely to a NiFi cluster that does some routing and transformation on that. And it could use that information to populate operational databases like Apache HBase or uh, real-time data stores like Apache Kudu. Then I could build uh, visual applications on top of that or dashboards. And I could do that with Apache Hue. And I could feed, feed that through Kafka. So I keep that stream going and get that through some Flink where I could do regular analytics or SQL, or I can interact with uh, Apache MXNet or other models, whether that's machine learning or deep learning. Very easy to integrate that, as well as integrate other sources of data. So let's hop out of here and go into my demo. First, I wanted to show you, this is SSH into the Xavier, just to see how it's going. I just testing some uh, an MXNet uh, Python here runs very fast, does what I want. So on here I've got the, a Minify agent running. It is sending data into my uh, NiFi cluster here, and as you can see here, I've got input coming in, and I could take a look at what we call our data provenance or lineage of all this information coming in. As you can see, this is current data. It just came in a few seconds ago based on my time here. And I can see all the information about it so I know what's going on on that device back there. So I can see when things arrived, came through HTTP. I see here this particular data is from one of the cameras. So this is an image, and we're going to do some image processing on that. What I could do is download that. We'll take a look at, at it is. Uh, take the picture of my wall. I got to maybe adjust my camera. You can see here a picture of one of the other cameras. <laughs> I don't really have a good uh, thing to take pictures of. Usually I'm at the conference. I'll put this at the front of the podium, get a picture of uh, what's going on in the audience or point it out a window, maybe get some cars. It would be nice if this was in uh, one of the beautiful cities of the world and not in my little office here. So we've got this data coming in. Some of it is uh, the results of classifications. So this one just came in. Let's take a look at that. 
similar thing. We have attributes that let me know, you know, where it came from, unique IDs, those sort of things, very important. Uh, here, I'm just grabbing the text results of running those uh, classifications, just because I want to have them to see if there was any problems. Use that for my own debugging. I'm just going to send that to a log system somewhere. And for this one, I'm grabbing the same thing for SegNet, just to give you an idea. And then the uh, actual results of my Python script running those uh, three cameras is coming in here. I could see that's coming from the demo app. I put this in a log and it's grabbing, it's tailing that log file. So every time I get a new run, new line shows up. Plus I get, uh, you know, however that came in, plus a unique ID if I need to uh, trace it down. And then I could take a look at this. It's a JSON file. Let's zoom in on that, make it a little easier. So I could see I've created a unique ID there. It tells me which of the cameras it was, uh, what IP it was, how long it took. You know, what was the percent match? I really doubt there's a jellyfish in my office. Otherwise, I'm kind of scared. Uh, what was the host name? And then where was this image that I used as my output? Where was the image for input? My MAC address, all those sort of things with a unique ID. Makes it easy for me to track what's going on. Let's shrink this down a little bit. So we have a bunch of that data coming in. And what's nice here is I could do a real live query on it. So if I wanted to segment that based on maybe I'm doing intruders, if there's another person in the room, do an alert, do something immediately, something's wrong, Tim. Uh, so the next thing I do is I'm taking that data in and I'm sending that to my deep learning processor, getting the uh, results back, and then I'm doing uh, some analytics on that. So I'll get back things like, like I mentioned before, the bounding box, what it saw. It's very possible there's a couple of TV monitors. I've got a lot of them, if you see here. And I may be classified as a person if they're being nice today. And then we've got the bounding box and probabilities there. A couple things that found in the picture. That's great. And I push those results to a Slack channel. Uh, I could also push that to any data store, database, REST call, call your... Uh, whatever you need to call, you know, your deep learning system. See, here's the results in Slack. And in Slack, I've also sent some other analytics over here, including some images. Those must have come off of that news feed. It's finding things in the picture. So that's pretty interesting. So we're just about out of time. I included a lot of links here to let you know how to learn more, how to contact me what we're doing here. So please feel free to reach out. It's very easy to integrate MXNet and NiFi, whether it's through DJL or through uh, native uh, MXNet. Reach out. Thanks for watching my talk. Uh, thanks to uh, MXNet and all the technologies that make uh, my job as a data engineer that much easier. Thanks again.